Harvard-trained economist, gold is rising just as I forecast it would. Harry then says he has been expecting a substantial rally in gold, and now we re seeing just that. He rests what comes next by Harry Dent of Economy and Markets. Three trends I've even forecasting have been happening in the last year, the strong Trump rally, rising 10-year Treasury bond yields, and rising gold prices. They re all related to late-stage inflation and the expected tax cuts, which have materialized. One thing that still hasn't he happened, and still doesn't he look imminent yet, is the bursting of this increasingly parabolic stock bubble. Hard for that to happen when we've e had the QE free lunch for so long, and now the large tax cuts to corporations. GDP growth seems to be picking up, but not as much as expected. The fourth quarter reading came in at 2.6% instead of the expected 3.0%, plus, the full 2017 reading was 2.3%, just marginally higher than past years, that have averaged 2%. Rising growth suggests rising inflation, and rising inflation means higher T-bond yields, which have already been the case, as the chart shows. I have also been warning that inflation is a lagging indicator. The last recession saw inflation rise in the first several months and T-bond yields with it before coming down into late 2008-slash-early 2009. This is typical, and comes from rising wages with tighter labor availability, and rising commodity prices, in the late stages of a boom. On a related note, I've even expecting a substantial gold rally, but not a new bull market for the commodity from the extreme oversold reaction into the end of 2015, when gold hit $1,050 from an all-time high of $1,934 in September 2011. Look at this next chart. Note that this chart is the annualized percentage change in gold to correlate with the percentage rate of inflation. Gold is more of an inflation hedge and a crisis hedge. It crashed 33% in the midst of the Lehman Brothers meltdown, while silver was down 50%. With this trend of mildly rising inflation, gold prices, and T-bond yields will likely continue moving upward until there are signs of an economic slowdown and slash, or a bubble burst in stocks. Then deflation will set in, as occurred briefly in late 2008. The T-bond channel I am watching closely has a strong resistance around 3.0% yields which was the previous high in December 2013, and we are getting close at 2.73% on Monday, January 29th. If we break strongly above that, then we are in a new ball game, that would be very bad for stocks, and real estate. Gold has resistance at the last major high around $1,375, and the high before that, at around $1,428, is the other strong point of resistance. That s the range I've been forecasting in the last year, or so. Rising T-bond yields aren't good for stock or real estate valuations. Will 3.0% start to be that point? We may find out soon enough. I see 3.0% as the opportunity to buy long-term treasuries, 30 year are the best, to lock in higher yields, and play the inevitable deflation trends ahead when this bubble finally bursts. And I see the $1,375 to $1,400 area, as the opportunity for people. Who didn't he get out of gold in 2011 when we warned to finally take your money and run?
John Rubino shows what will carry gold up to $10,000 per ounce. John Rubino describes where gold is right now, and how it will get to the price of $10,000 by John Rubino of dollar collapse after what seems like a decade in the shadow of tech stocks and cryptocurrencies, gold, and silver are rocking again. Which of course leaves everyone wondering if this is the beginning of the long-awaited epic run or just a head fake preceding yet another grinding, protracted, soul-sucking decline. The following chart has a couple of technical indicators, that, if history still matters, shed some light on the challenges gold now faces. The first is the 50-day moving average, shown here, as the thin line, that tracks the more colorful price line. Note how when gold's price spikes, Above the moving average, it is, in technical terms, overbought. In other words, it has ahead of itself and has to fall to get back into sync with longer term momentum. In late 2017 gold pierced its moving average and kept on going, and is now far into overbought territory. That has a negative. The second indicator is the $1,360 Oz level, which seems to represent serious resistance. Whenever gold has gotten close, or briefly spiked above, this number, it has been quickly smacked back down. As this is written on the evening of January 24th, gold is at $1,362. Again, negative. Bull markets frequently progress through a series of such tests, with a security or asset class trying and failing to break through until finally it does. After which it rallies to the next, much higher resistance level. Where is gold in this process? Will it have to bounce off more technical barriers before, someday in the indeterminate future? rising to its intrinsic value of $5,000 $10,000? Or will today's overwhelmingly positive fundamentals, spiraling global debt, rising inflation, the falling dollar, cryptocurrency profits looking for a home, Chinese and Russian gold demand, alarming geopolitical crises everywhere, bring sound money back into style sooner rather than later? Technical analysis deals in probabilities, and based on the history of the above indicators the highest percentage bet would be to take some profits after Wednesday a spike. But based on fundamentals which are now a raging fire in the fiat currency theater, from which everyone will soon be fleeing selling precious metals, or related mining stocks here risks missing out on what could be an epic bull market. Put another way, technical indicators presume a consistent, continuous environment in which past is prologue. So they usually work, but become obsolete when the world changes in fundamental ways. If a crisis, like the 2008 housing bust, decimates the financial establishment, or a new idea, like the dot-coms or bitcoin, captures the world's imagination. The result is a discontinuity in which old indicators lose their meaning. How many resistance levels do you think Bitcoin blew through on its way to 19,000? How many support zones did Lehman Brothers pierce on its way to zero? Probably too many to count. Gold and silver will eventually be caught up in a similar mass awakening. The only questions are when it happens and what sets it off. The possible catalysts are multiplying, with an especially interesting new one being the gold-based cryptocurrencies now being planned that might make gold and eventually silver as portable as a credit card. Another is the panic out of bonds that will ensue if interest rates rise just a little more. 1% of the global fixed income market flowing into gold would send it past $5,000 without a backward glance. 
Barring a major catalyst, the steady accumulation of debt at every level of every major society will still force a monetary reset, which is another term for massive devaluation of fiat currencies, against real stuff, including gold. stages of a boom. On a related note, I've even expecting a substantial gold rally, but not a new bull market for the commodity from the extreme oversold reaction into the end of 2015, when gold hit $1,050 from an all-time high of $1,934 in September 2011. Look at this next chart. Note that this chart is the annualized percentage change in gold to correlate with the percentage rate of inflation. Gold is more of an inflation hedge and a crisis hedge. It crashed 33% in the midst of the Lehman Brothers meltdown, while silver was down 50%. With this trend of mildly rising inflation, gold prices, and T-bond yields will likely continue moving upward until there are signs of an economic slowdown and slash, or above our real estate valuations. Will 3.0% start to be that point? We may find out soon enough. I see 3.0% as the opportunity to buy long-term treasuries, 30 year are the best, to lock in higher yields and play the inevitable deflation trends ahead when this bubble finally bursts. And I see the $1,375 to $1,400 area as the opportunity for people who didn't he get out of gold in 2011 when we warned to finally take your money and run. John Rubino shows what will carry gold up to $10,000 per ounce. John Rubino describes where gold is right now, and how it will get to the burst in stocks. Then deflation will set in, as occurred briefly in late 2008. The T-Bond channel I am watching closely has a strong resistance around 3.0% yields which was the previous high in December 2013, and we are getting close, at 2.73% on Monday, January 29th. If we break strongly above that, then we are in a new ball game, that would be very bad for stocks, and real estate. Gold has resistance at the last major high around $1,375 and the high before that at around $1,428 is the other strong point of resistance. That s the range I've been forecasting in the last year or so. Rising T-bond yields aren't good for stock or Harvard trained economist, gold is rising just as I forecast it would Harry then says he has been expecting a substantial rally in gold, and now we re seeing just that. He rests what comes next by Harry Dent of Economy and Markets 3 trends I've even forecasting have been happening in the last year, the strong Trump rally. Rising 10-year Treasury bond yields and rising gold prices. They re all related to late stage inflation and the expected tax cuts which have materialized. One thing that still hasn't he happened and still doesn't he look imminent yet is the bursting of this increasingly parabolic stock bubble. Hard for that to happen when we've e had the QE free lunch for so long and now the large tax cuts to corporations. GDP growth seems to be picking up, but not as much as expected. The fourth quarter reading came in at 2.6% instead of the expected 3.0%, plus. The full 2017 reading was 2.3%, just marginally higher than past years, that have averaged 2%. 
Rising growth suggests rising inflation, and rising inflation means higher T-bond yields, which have already been the case, as the chart shows. I have also been warning that inflation is a lagging indicator. The last recession saw inflation rise in the first several months and T-bond yields with it before coming down into late 2008 early 2009. This is typical, and comes from rising wages with tighter labor availability, and rising commodity prices, in the late